The Army's MV-22 will perform combat logistics, resupply, and medical evacuation missions. The Navy will initially receive 50 HV-22s for combat search and rescue, with the possibility for 300 more for use in anti-submarine warfare. Strike Team Transportation is the Air Force mission for Osprey, and they expect their CV-22 to play an important role in anti-terrorist operations. As unusual as this multi-service program will be, its acquisition will also break new ground. Under a unique Department of Defense procurement policy, the Tilt Rotor team of Bell Helicopter, Textron, and Boeing Vertol Company will pay for their own manufacturing tooling. Both contractors have also agreed to stringent conditions of acceptance and performance. Yes, it's the, uh, the model of Navy procurement. Uh, we try to introduce cost control for the life of the program. We have competition as our, our cornerstone. We have a fixed price development, which uh, I believe is the first airplane that's really really gone into a development where it's fixed price. And then we have two contractors building the airplane. When we get into production, we're going to place them one against the other so we don't get caught in that sole source environment where I told you it was going to cost $10, but, but now I'm the only game in town. It's really going to cost you $25. A valuable aircraft like Osprey will not be inexpensive to build. Estimates vary, but the V-22 will certainly cost more than either a comparably sized helicopter or airplane. I can give you numbers that, uh, that range all over the, the ballpark. Let me give you the easiest one to understand, which is what we call recurring flyaway. And that's as the airplane flies over the factory fence, what's the cost of everything that's in it and, and on it? And that'll average about $16 million a copy. Bell will be responsible for developing the wing, nacelles, prop rotor, and drive system assemblies. One advance here is nacelle access cowls with built-in work platforms for easier maintenance. The 6,000 horsepower turboshaft engines, the T406 AD400 built by General Motors Allison Division, are a low-risk component that evolved from previously successful Allison power plants. Like the XV15, the V22 will have single-engine capabilities. Alan Shane. There's an interconnect shaft uh, between the two rotors connecting actually the, the drive systems in each nacelle across uh, through the wing. Uh, the, the cross shaft or the interconnect shaft is normally unloaded and so it would only pick up torque in the event of, a, of something like a rolling motion of the aircraft loading up one side and unloading the other uh, or in the event of an engine failure. Osprey has an ingenious way to facilitate operations on board ships. We also have designed it so that it folds up. The propellers, if you will, index and all fold in along the leading edge of the wing. Then the entire wing rotates to align itself with the fuselage. Uh, all this, by the way, can take place in a 60 knot wind in 90 seconds. It doesn't fly very well when it's in that configuration, so it, we can undo it in a 60 knot wind in 90 seconds too. Boeing Vertol is responsible for the fuselage structure. The cabin is 24 feet long, 6 feet wide, and can seat 24 combat-equipped troops. The cockpit is designed for a pilot, co-pilot, and crew chief, and features three large, multi-function cathode ray tube displays at both the pilot and co-pilot stations. These displays are also compatible with night vision goggle systems. The large protrusions on either side of the fuselage are called sponsons. These will carry fuel and house the landing gear. The V-22's tail or empennage section consists of horizontal and vertical stabilizers, rudders, and an elevator. A major factor in tilt rotor selection by the armed services is its ability to self-deploy. The Marine Corps helicopter it replaces cannot. If this aircraft offers such advances in performance and capabilities, why wasn't it built sooner? One possible answer, as much as the tilt rotor concept is a blending of diverse elements, the modern Osprey is made up of many make or break technologies, like composite materials, fly-by-wire flight controls, new prop rotor structures, and aerodynamics, all of which have only appeared in the last decade or so. The coming of the Osprey will usher in a new era in military flight. To say that our air transportation system has capacity problems is stating the obvious. Runways, terminals, access roads, neighboring highways are all straining under the load, particularly in the northeastern United States. 
All weather operations dictate costly snow removal efforts to keep these roads and runways clear. We are experiencing considerable congestion in the metropolitan New York, New Jersey region. Our three airports are currently handling some 80 million passengers a year and with the projected growth in traffic, uh, the existing congestion will probably worsen. So we look to uh, solutions to, uh, to, to increase capacity and uh, alleviate the congestion. And we view this as a possible, this the civil tilt rotor, as offering a possible new totally uh, VTOL short haul transportation system that would operate city center to city center. And if that should prove feasible, that would allow the diversion of some of the short haul traffic, say New York to Washington, New York to Boston, to be diverted from uh, LaGuardia and Newark in particular, uh, thereby creating additional capacity at those airports and creating a whole new system using downtown facilities. For many travelers, getting to and from the airport, struggling through a crowded terminal and suffering departure or arrival delays takes longer than the flight. In a typical uh, commuter run, say if I were a businessman going from Washington, D.C. to New York City, if I were in the city center, I'd either take the metro or taxi and get a land uh, segment ride out to the national airport. And then I'd go in the airport and I'd wait in line uh, to get on board one of the Eastern shuttles or the Pan Am shuttles going up to the New York area. Typically, once I'm on board the airplane, because of the air traffic congestion and the problem of gates at the other end, I might sit on that aircraft for a 35 to 40 minute delay just waiting to take off. Once we've been cleared to back off from the gate, we typically will take about 15 to 20 minutes waiting in line to get to that concrete runway all of the airplanes uh, taking off have to line up one after the other to leave from the runway, and therefore we wind up with a further delay there. Once en route, the jet airplane is traveling at uh, four to 500 miles an hour and goes directly up there, but then it has to line up in that long queue of airplanes waiting to land on that long concrete runway again. And so he's out there mixing uh, slowing down and uh, position himself to be able to do that. Once he lands, he taxis into the gate and the commuter gets off. He gets a taxi into New York City, another 45 minute segment. Uh, so the entire trip, instead of just taking that one hour from airport to airport, really consists of two land segments and an air segment. When you total those up, you're looking at about two to two and a half hours worth of travel time and the additional cost of the two land segments. The tilt rotor, by contrast, is able to pick you up at a downtown vertiport, fly you in 45 minutes to New York, and land at a downtown vertiport in the vicinity of the business you want to do. It's fairly certain that existing airports will have to serve the medium and long haul markets in the future, since there is, understandably, opposition to new jet port construction. The problem of communities in, in creating any new facilities is, uh, is a very formidable one. Okay? We, we've had experience in the past where we endeavored to build a new jet port. That was in the 1960s. And the people in the area of the site that we had selected uh, violently uh, opposed the project and succeeded in getting and bringing political pressures to uh, to, to virtually prohibit any such facility. Uh, all of that is to say that uh, you, you can't underestimate the importance of the communities. And uh, we would hope, though, that by demonstrating how quiet the aircraft is and that the ability to locate these along the waterfront where you can take off over water, uh, that, that hopefully um, the communities might accept such a facility.